Hey sisters, welcome back to HB Ministries, a ministry for you to believe, behold, and become all God's created you to be in whatever season of life. I first wanna just welcome you, all my newbies, and then everybody that's just been here. I call you lifers. Um, thank you, thank you for being here. And thank you for all the generous comments that I have received, gosh, in the past three weeks on this Nehemiah study that we're doing on how much it is really blessing you. I also wanna thank several of you for sharing this stu study with others. Um, when you share this study, what it does is other people go onto the study, but they go onto my YouTube and it lets YouTube know that there's more uh, subscribers, there's more p people interested and overall interested in Christian content. That is the huge. I am not here to grow up my platform. Um, I have been teaching for well over 20 years. I was teaching way before Facebook was even a thing and before social media was a thing. It was when we met on Tuesdays for our Bible study time and I would teach for an hour, then us ladies would break up in our small group. So building a platform in numbers means nothing to me, but getting um, the movement of God and stirring um, the faith channel that are out there are huge. So I cannot thank you enough for sharing. So again, if you want to share a study or if you want to share one of my live lessons or something that I'm sharing today, just to encourage somebody to, you know, get involved. Right now, this is the hub. This is how we're doing church. This is the new normal. Okay. New normal is doing Bible study outside and talking to you in my backyard. The new normal is meeting with you every single Friday for a live study. My new normal right now is setting up the whole month for all of you ladies. And then for us to meet over in our hub, where's our hub. It's our community on Facebook. HB Bible study and resource page is our hub. It's our community. It's where you can let me know things that you want, things that you need, things that you're enjoying, where you can share your notes with me, where we can be accountable. So that is where I want you to jump. I'll leave the link right below. Um, without further ado, we are going to get into today's lesson. So for those that are regulars here, you know that we have a calendar. For those that are new, what is the calendar all about? Here is the calendar. Head over to heatherbaxter.com. Click up at the top, the August devotions. That'll bring you to this August calendar. It is so neat for you. Look at handout one for week one, week one, handout two for week two, handout four three, which is where we are now for week three. And you have a video, a formal video that you were to watch for each week, followed up by my informal videos, my fun videos, where I just come on during the week and I talk to you about a specific verse or some specific topic. But guess what? It goes right along with whatever we're studying in the book of the Amaya. So today you're going to see on your calendar, I'm talking about opposition. And um, I'm also talking about being a peacemaker or being a peacekeeper. So we've been talking about all of that in the past week. And then today we're really going to zoom in on confrontation because Nehemiah did it so well. This is a marked moment lesson. Okay. I'm going to say it again, a marked moment lesson. This is something that I would highly recommend that you maybe open your Bible to uh, Matthew 18 and you jot down these steps right next to Matthew 18 and you remember this. So if something happens, because guess what? It's going to happen. Two scenarios that I had to use this direction in my life where it was just real and raw. And uh, I want to, um, I just kind of want to share a real story because I think that that sometimes helps. So let's go ahead first and read the verse. It says right here, I'll put the verse here for you. Matthew 18, if a brother sins against you, go to him privately and confront him with his fault. If he listens and confesses, you have won back a brother. But if not, then take one or two others with you and go back to him again, proving everything you say by these witnesses. Now, if you can see here in the verse, I have some keywords circled. I have privately circled, I have listens, and I have confesses, and then I have but if not. 
So these are very key things that you need to be watching and discerning in the situation that you're in. Now, I would like you to write these five steps down. As I talk about the five steps, I'm going to talk to you about some examples in which I had to utilize uh, this verse. Okay, step number one is you want to go to tell him his fault. Go to tell him his fault. Now, here's some things I want to say to you. Before you ever go to someone and tell him his fault, I want you to truly be in humble prayer before you approach this person for him to prepare your spirit. Now the word confrontation feels scary because you think automatically that confrontation means judgment. Confrontation means negative attitude. Confrontation already means that you're angry or you have something against that person. So we have to ask God to take all the wrong spirits of confrontation away in the beginning of our prayer and that we would come to them with a humble spirit, with a kind spirit, um, and with a, just a spirit of expression of God's truth. Or if there's something that you're questioning, that it's all in a pos positive matter and that that person will receive a sweet, genuine, kind spirit first and foremost, that, that, that they're going to feel comfortable. There's going to be a peace that surpasses all understanding. And you have to be careful that you're not barging into this situation and confronting this person with the wrong attitude. And I love it because it says here to go and tell him alone, privately. That's also something I want you to see because um, the last thing you need to do is confront through a text confront through a social media status or off of a comment. I've seen people confront somebody on their wrong or call them out on something off of a comment of somebody else's Facebook status. I'm like, really, that is not the place for you to air something that you feel is dirty or you've been wronged or you feel like that person is doing wrong. It's not the place to do that. And I don't even want to call it dirty laundry because you know what? The Bible says that we are nothing but filthy rags and it's God's goodness and his grace and his mercy and his shed blood that cleanses us every single day. Um, we all create sin every single day and commit sin every single day, but it's through God's um, mercy and his grace and his favor that he makes it known to us. He bubbles it up in our spirit to say, hey, wait a minute, be careful. This isn't good. This isn't truth. This isn't wholesome. And so God works with us the same way, but he wouldn't barge in and confront us or put us in front of people or expose our sin and be rude or talk to somebody else and gossip about it prior to the confrontation. It doesn't work like that. It's you and God alone. And then you going with a humble spirit, spirit with prayer first to this person in private. I think that's so, so, so important. Number two uh, is when you kick it up a notch. And what do I mean by kick it up a notch? When do you kick it up a notch? If that person does not accept what you're saying, basically they ignore you and they're like, you know what, I don't even want to deal with this, um, whatever. And they just, they, they know, especially if they're a believer, they know something's not right in their spirit, but they're just not willing to confront their conviction. And conviction means a feeling that you know is just not right. It's like hitting a wall. And you really, first of all, don't want to admit it to that person because you really are kind of okay with it. So it's better to close the drawers and push those people away and ignore it. And that's kind of where it ends. Now, let me just share an example. I'm not giving no names here, but I had a very, 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 very close friend whom I absolutely love. Still a good friend of mine. We don't see each other as much at all. Um, but back when my kids were like two and five, I mean, we were, we were very, very close. Uh, we've just grown apart because of life. Um, but her and her husband, um, you know, we all went to church together, Bible study together, you name it. Uh, as a matter of fact, she was, she was in with me in some of my Bible study classes and um, her and her husband were going through some marriage difficulties. And I also knew that she wasn't being honest to her husband. I'm going to keep this story very simple. Um, and you probably know where that, where that will go. And I knew it wasn't right. And I knew it wasn't um, fair to her husband. And I 
knew she wasn't going to tell me, but I knew, I knew everything was up. I just, I just knew. And then she kind of spilled, you know, it out a little bit and I kind of let it go. I kind of swept it under the rug, which if you were watching um, this week's session three, Nehemiah's study, which is where we're in, I'll put the link of this week's study right below this. Uh, I talked about being a peacekeeper and a peacemaker in this study. And I just kind of wanted to be, you know, what's so funny is my dog is so old. My one Chihuahua sidebar here, she's so old that she can barely see what's in front of her, but somehow she can see a shadow way across the street, like way, can't figure that one out. But anyway, um, sorry about that little sidebar. I knew something was up. And so I approached her, um, one-on-one -on -one. I prayed about it and I approached her. I, um, confronted her with the fault. And when I, when it says in there with the fault, I approached her with what I knew went against scripture, went against what God said. So basically having an affair and not being honest with your husband is not going to bring about all the blessings God has for your life and God's hand on your life and therefore your children and what God has for them in the future. Of course, God's gonna keep the children safe, but just the whole family atmosphere, the whole, the whole family and everything that God has in that structure as a blessing if done right. And she didn't wanna listen. She did not have my ear. And that, I knew at that point, it was just kind of one of these things, but yet she wanted, you know, wanted to keep our friendship. Well, then I noticed that our friendship was just kind of drifting off because, and afterwards she had told me that it was hard to be my friend when um, she felt that I was walking in truth and she was not, it was better to just stay away from truth. This is the truth. This is exactly what she said. It was easier to just walk away from it than have to constantly feel like it was up in front of your face. But I wasn't going to put it up in her face. I was doing the one thing and I was confronting one time and hoping that she would listen. Now it didn't end there because this is what I love about accountability with sisters in a church home and a family that you're close to. I took her other good friend from church, which was our good friend. We, we prayed together. We, um, we did Bible studies together. We held everything in accountability. And in this verse, it says, um, but if not, then take one or two others and, and they have to be yeah, preferably another Christian, one or two other Christians, uh, sisters with you and go back to them again and prove everything you say by the witnesses. And so I took somebody else. Again, it is not got time for gossip. This doesn't mean you go gossip to your friends and then go get them and then go take them. No, you just say, hey, we need to do this. It's direct. It's like, this is what's going on. We're not gossiping. I need you to come with me because this is what the Bible says. So let's do it the right way. Let's pray together and let's go. End of discussion. That's what it needs to look like. And so we did that and it was another one of these. And at that point, we really didn't talk anymore for a very, very long time. The next step that you are honestly to do is to take it to the church. Now, this step is really hard. It depends if you're really involved in a church. She was involved in a church. She was involved in ministry. We were involved together. The pastor knew her. We were all accountable. So I took it to our pastor. I sat down and I said, I am bringing this to you because I'm hurt. Like I am wounded. These were our closest friends. Like we hung out with them on the weekends, my husband and I, and we were praying. And so I remember telling my husband, um, we gotta pray about this. I'm gonna do the last thing that the Bible says and I'm gonna take it to the church. I'm gonna take it to our pastor. And I left it there. And that's the last thing I could do. And I know our pastor also talked to her and brought her in and got very specific and very biblical with her. And the confrontation was based on truth and truth alone. And sometimes having truth put right in front of your face when you do not want to deal with it or do not want to resonate with it, it's easier to walk away and shut the door on God. It is. And we've all been there to some extent. We've all been there. When my marriage hit rock bottom, my husband this whole thing was done with my husband because he was a believer. He accepted Christ at 18. I was a non-believer at the time. So people came and confronted him and his fault within his family and his mom specifically, and then somebody else. And guess what? They gained an ear. They gained my husband ear. It, it might not have been his first year, but it was definitely his second year. The second time that they came to talk to him, it was when the Holy Spirit finally got in there and said, listen, 
you've got to listen, Danny. And that's, that's what everybody in the family uh, calls him. And you know what? The Lord humbled us both. And the Lord used his situation to bring me around to salvation. So God can work all things for the good. So those are kind of two quick stories. Um, and then I'll give you another story in a second. So you have to take it up a notch. What it means by taking it up a notch is if it doesn't work first time with you privately, then you get a witness. If it doesn't work with a witness and you are in a place where you're in a church, you know that person's involved in a church, knows the pastor, depending if your church is small or big or however you feel, you'll know the discernment. Um, then you can take it to that close friend, that pastor in the church. Number three, um, it kind of goes with uh, taking it to the church. If they refuse, then you tell the church. If they're not repenting, if they're not really, maybe they give you the first year, they give you the second year, but now there's no repenting, then the church can excommunicate. They absolutely can. Now, it doesn't mean that they excommunicate you and you have no room to, you know, rise again. Absolutely. But you have to be careful because there's so many people out there that can have one hand in ministry and completely be living a different life. And so there is a reason why the church has rules and protocols. I think it's very important. And a lot of times it's for you. It's for you to be confronted, to forgive and to work out God's grace and mercy and set you in a time out for a while to realize that things are done God's way. And so I've, I've watched that several times. I watched it with the pastors in my old, my old church, um, even pastors. Yes, even pastors fall. And they're in a timeout until God works in their heart and brings them back. And when they come back, they're in a better place because they're going to witness and become a witness to somebody else that needs to be confronted. And they're going to be able to confront better because they've come past it. They have compassion for what that person may be feeling. All right, so it's that simple. Today's lesson is that simple. And when I think of Nehemiah, he definitely had a way of um, first going to God, definitely going to God, and then being able to put his hand back on the project and either confronting somebody with truth or just forgiving and moving on and forgetting. So now I wanna ask you if you've ever actually used this verse and knew that you had to pull out the Matthew 18 um, out of your pocket and just say, okay, I've got to utilize this today. Um, so I wanna ask you, can you think of a time someone truly forgave you um, for something wrong you did to him and her? And what did it do to you? Can you think of a time someone truly forgave you? Now, when my husband came back to me, he did it properly. He asked me, first of all, for his forgiveness. And I truly forgave him because when I watched the process of Matthew 18 being done in his life by his parents and the confrontation and then how they won his heart back to God in truth, it took time. Remember, he took a ear and then another ear. So it took the second time um, when he was, I remember he was telling me that he was in the woods with his stepfather and they were having a really long talk and that was after his mother and then there was lots of prayer in between um and calling on prayer for people that his heart would be won back and it was and i have to say that right now what did it do for me it brought me to christ sometimes when things are done properly it brings another person in the party back to christ and thing is are you able to forgive others as you have been forgiven is there something that's come up where you're able to forgive others as, as you have been forgiven? Another thing I wrote down is, who do you need to confront and forgive today? Who do you need to confront or maybe forgive today? So let's call this our conflict resolution plan. How do we really resolve a conflict biblically? Matthew 18. So I hope the application questions were helpful. I'll leave them in the drop down below. And you guys, I pray that this is a blessing. If this is something you can share with somebody, share. If not, do not forget to hit subscribe and click the bell button. So again, we can be pushing Christian content out there. Be blessed and I will see you all in tomorrow's message. Bye-bye.